the recording has begun uh, good morning welcome uh, let's get into this morning's class i want to request somebody to lead in prayer please heavenly father thank you for this wonderful morning thank you for this class lord help uh, ma'am to teach lord give the wisdom give the concentration to us lord we need no the missing thing from your word lord help us to know more more about you we need to pass through the class in jesus name we pray amen Amen. I, I'm not sure if the voice was heard, but anyway. Um, so let's go straight to chapter 13 in our notes. So if you have that with you, please open it up. We will come back to chapter 12 later and uh, other chapters as well. So, so far we've understood that God has given us authority. We can overcome the influence of Satan because of the power of the cross. And we've also looked at the ways in which we can enforce our God-given authority. When it comes to exercising our authority at a personal level, uh, what are some things that we may want done? We may want at a personal level to cast out demons because that happens to people. Demons have uh, taken charge and demons are influencing uh, an individual at the highest level. So casting demons out is releasing that deliverance okay, to that person. We can also uh, destroy yokes and burdens. Yokes and burdens are, again, influence, but it's a different kind of an influence where there is oppression. You remember the levels we have discussed we will cast out, or if there is an oppression, we have to uh, make sure that it is broken or it is uprooted, removed. So that is what destroying yokes and burdens means. So God can help any individual who is uh, burdened in this way to be free. And how else can we exercise our authority? We can stop any form of demonic works. For example, when Jesus encountered a storm, uh, he did not just take it. He went against it and he rebuked the storm and he said, okay, uh, peace be still. So there are circumstances in our uh, everyday lives, uh, in somebody's personal life, when we can sense that the enemy is trying to come against us. So then what do we do? We have to use our authority to stop him. So you stop him by the command or you stop him... Uh, Whichever other way, you declare the word of God and you speak the word of God and, and tell him that, hey, you have no right, so I am coming against you right now and I stop you. You cannot do this in my life anymore. Uh, I don't know how many of you were here for the prayer session when pastor led and we had that time where you, know, you use exercise believers' authority. So that is the practical of how it's actually done. So you speak to these demonic powers, you command them, Okay, and uh, you rebuke them, you cast them out. That's the way in which you demonstrate your authority. So now, since all this is possible, how do we do it? That's what we are going to discuss. There are two terms which are used in the Christian circles when it comes to deliverance. We are going to call overcoming the influence of the devil as deliverance. Okay, that's, I'm going to use the term deliverance. Two terms are used in deliverance in Christian circles. One is um, ground level warfare. Okay, ground level warfare. The other one is strategic level warfare. So two terms. What is the meaning of these terms? Ground level warfare is when we overpower demonic um, entities at a personal or an individual level. So let's say a demon is being cast out of a, a person or we are praying for a person. We go against uh, demonic powers. We stop the work of demonic powers or we break the oppression of the enemy over their lives. So at an individual level, personal level is ground level warfare. Okay, did you understand? Okay. Now if it goes beyond that, beyond an individual, so let's say we are praying for an entire community or a nation or a city, right? So what's happening now? It's more than a personal individual level. 
and when we do that we'll have to deal with principalities you know powers of darkness uh, spirits of wickedness so because of that we term it strategic level warfare okay strategic level warfare so one is ground level which is any individual when we uh, bring deliverance uh, in into their lives with our authority that's ground level the other one is strategic level so today uh, i will discuss more about ground level warfare now both of these are fine uh, we mustn't think that you know uh, it's it's too difficult or uh, because strategic level sounds so big uh, we can't deal with those demonic powers not really the cross has defeated every demon the cross has defeated satan so for the cross it's it's nothing special the categories of demons okay but the approach will be different that's how we understand it uh, and and that that is the mindset we should also have so the way i approach when i am speaking deliverance to a person who is uh, possessed by a demon spirit that is different compared to when i pray or i go into warfare for the city okay so in that manner uh, we can take it forward i hope all the online students are doing okay all right so if there are any questions please do uh, stop and ask in between okay good to know yeah good to know all right now how did jesus minister deliverance in ground level warfare what are the examples <laughs> we have many instances of jesus ministering to people uh, who are affected by demon spirits and one of the good things you and i can do is to study every example where jesus went and delivered people i remember once when um, there was a a particular student we had to pray for her for deliverance because uh, from what we understood she had multiple demons and we had told her okay you come this day we are going to pray for you so this is how i prepared myself i read every passage in the uh, bible where jesus delivered somebody how did he do it what did he do what did he say how did he interact with the demons so this is something we can keep doing again and again and again and again because there is power in the word of god so as we read it not only do we get clarity uh if i may say you know the presence of god the anointing right we we gain that we gain that so uh it is all listed here we may not have time to read every single passage but i want to encourage you take time to go through every one of those and even in the future when you are doing your ministries you take time to meditate on these passages so today we can maybe look at one or two passages let's read uh, matthew chapter 8 verses 28 to 34 one person please go ahead and uh, um, pick that up then one more person could uh, kindly read matthew 15 Verses twenty one to twenty eight. Yes, let's read these, and we'll see if we want to read more. When he had come to the other side, to the country of the um, Gergesenes, there he met him two demon-possessed men coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce, so that no one could pass that way. And suddenly they cried out, saying, "What have we to do with you, Jesus, you Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time?" Now a good way off from there, from them, there was a herd of many swine feeding. So the demons begged him, saying, "If you cast us out," Permit us to go away into the herd of swine, and he said to them, "Go." So when they had come out, they went into the herd of swine, and suddenly the whole herd of swine ran violent, violently down the steep place into the sea and perished in the water. Then those who kept them fled, and they went away into the city and told everything, including what had happened to the demon-possessed men. And behold, 
the whole city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to, to depart from their region. Okay, so what are some observations that you have from this passage about Jesus ministering deliverance to those demon-possessed men? Okay, very good. So he didn't wait for the appointed time. We know the time which is coming up, the ultimate judgment. Before that, he cast them out. Very good. What else? Anything else you observe? Correct. So the demons already know, they have knowledge right, of Jesus. So they recognized. Very good. So can they recognize believers? Yes. How do we know that? Yes, uh, Francis, you have some lifestyle. Okay. You remember that passage, uh, the seven sons of Sceva, where they say, Paul, we know, Jesus, we know, who are you? Because they were not believers. The people who went to cast out the demons were not believers. So you can understand, right? Even the person who's not a believer, the demons know. So obviously, if there is a believer, they know. Okay, uh, okay, that's a good observation. What else did we observe? Okay, uh, here uh, Jacken says, the devil recognized Jesus as the son of God. That's right. Okay, Mina has uh, given an answer. Any other observations? Yes. Oh. So the devil or the demons found a solution for themselves. Yeah. In this case, they asked Jesus and he heard their request. Anything else? Yes. So the people um did not understand the spiritual benefit of what happened but they were only looking at you know like the natural loss and they were upset yes how did jesus use his authority how did he use his authority yeah so he spoke right he commanded those demons to leave and they had asked him to send them into the herd of pigs. So how did the authority go? Through the words. Jesus spoke and they listened. When do they listen? When we carry authority. They have to listen, isn't it? So Jesus released his authority through the command that he gave. Okay, go. Right? So now we have understood. How did Jesus minister deliverance to individuals? He commanded the demons. Okay, so when we minister deliverance, what should we do? We can command demons because we don't see this stopping in the first century church. They follow the same pattern. So nothing has changed, isn't it? So why should we change? We follow the same pattern. Okay, good. Very good observations. The next passage there, who's going to read it? Yeah, please use the mic because online students can't hear you. Twenty-one, twenty-eight. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have the mercy on me. Oh Lord, son of David, uh, my daughter is severely demon possessed, but he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the Lord's sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, 
saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, true, true Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Okay. So uh, thank you for that. So here is a lady. She's seeking deliverance for her child. What are some observations? What did you observe? When did Jesus respond? Faith. When there was faith, he responded. Um, then what else do you see? On the basis of what did he did he go ahead and uh, you know say okay, take it? On the basis of what? Yeah, she was desperate, but I think faith is more what he appreciated. He said, okay, great is your faith. Notice how he understands the covenant. Because she's not part of the covenant, he first tells her that I can't. But because her faith is so great, um, he releases that you know healing or deliverance upon that uh, child. So that was before Jesus died. Now we know the work of the cross. So we have an understanding of the victory of the cross. So when we come against demon spirits, we come against them on the basis of the work of the cross. That should be very clear in our minds. Okay, so like this, every passage you can read, you can read what is happening, how Jesus spoke to them. In some places, yes, the demons are speaking back to Jesus, but then he says, okay, don't talk, right? I command you, don't talk. So you can observe the way he is actually ministering deliverance for individuals. Now, some of the things that we can understand overall from all these passages is that Jesus ministered with great authority. He was never, um, you know, scared. So when we minister and we cast out demons, we should have that same authority because we understand the power of the cross. So minister with authority. What else do we uh, see? He commanded the demons. Okay, He did not request or beg the demons, but he commanded. Okay, so when he has authority, he is commanding with that authority, and the demons come out. Sometimes demons speak, not always. So it can happen. Even when we are uh, uh, ministering to somebody, they may speak. Now, should we keep speaking back with them from what we see? If there was something uh, you know that he felt as necessary he spoke but other times he just commanded the demons to be quiet so same thing we can also apply if not required see because uh, demons can reveal the entry point this happened and that's how i entered this person like he was dedicated and i entered this person so when i am getting the information about the entry point it's fine let me get that. Then it's easy for me to minister to that person. So that way, we need to know what is required. So unnecessarily talking to the demons is not what we see Jesus do. So only sometimes he spoke to the demons. Then what else? Um, we notice that he cast out demons by the Spirit of God. In Matthew 12, verse 28, he says that the demon was cast out by the Spirit of God. So how does this apply to us? When we carry the anointing of God, demons have to flee. See, there are times when we may not even command, but demons leave. Especially if we are in a corporate setting where, let's say, there's a meeting, uh, there's a meeting going on and somebody has to minister, we don't have the time to lay hands on each person and command every demon. But you know, people experience deliverance. Even without the so-called preacher or minister of God ministering individually. Why? 
because of the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is saying that I, that demon was cast out by the Spirit of God. So can we do that? Yes. If we allow for the presence of the Holy Spirit, bondages can be broken, uh, demons can be cast out. Okay. Other things that we can learn here is, yeah, so these are some key ways in which Jesus actually ministered. So based on the experience of Jesus and, um, you know, other practical information which we have, there are some general instructions which we have to follow when we are uh, praying for someone or <coughs> I will say ministering because when it comes to casting out demons, we, we should, praying is praying to God. Heavenly Father, set this person free. Um, let them experience uh, your delivering power. That is praying. But when we are ministering deliverance, it's more like I command you in the name of Jesus, you spirit, leave this person. Leave right now. Like you're rebuking, it's warfare. So that's why I won't say when you're praying for the person. Instead, I'll say when you are ministering or when you're serving the person, with deliverance. This is how you would do it. So what are some things to keep in mind? I'll share them one by one. One is always operate out of a place of love. When we see somebody who is demon possessed, sometimes it's intimidating. Sometimes it's upsetting. Sometimes, you know, it can even make us angry. That why is this person like this? And, you know, we are forceful against the power of darkness. I've been saying, use your authority. You don't have to be gentle. You don't have to be kind to the demon. However, recognize that you have to be kind and gentle to the person. You understand? So while I am speaking to the demon, I am very firm. But when I'm speaking to the person, I have to be kind. OK? These are two different things. So be loving, operate out of love when you minister deliverance. Because sometimes we've also seen people can be very rough. Uh, somebody is possessed with the demon, but you know we are shouting at them. And we, are, we are being very rough with them. That's not right. Because ultimately, you see how Jesus ministered when that woman came to Jesus in Matthew 15 and said, my child needs to be delivered. And she says, even the dogs eat the crumb. What do you think was activated in Jesus? Compassion. Technically, there was no uh, reason why he should give her what she's asking. She's not in the covenant. But compassion. That is why he says, OK, fine. You take it. Great is your faith. So even when we are ministering deliverance, operate out of that place of love for the person. Okay, that is very, very important. Okay, what are a few other things? Sometimes our faith is at its highest and best after much prayer and fasting. Okay, we hear a lot of people say, oh, I'm, I'm going to fast three days, then I'm going to go pray for a demon. Is that okay? It is okay. It's, it's actually, if you can do that, please do that. Because we know the effects of prayer and fasting, they make our faith stronger. And what do you need to cast out demon? Faith, isn't it? So if possible, you fast and pray and prepare yourself before going and um, casting out demons. We can also meditate on the word. As I told you, if I know that, oh, okay, I'm going there, take all the scriptures, meditate, the power of the cross, how did Jesus cast out demons, all that. Then, next thing is, um, be confident, just like Jesus. He was authoritative and confident. Usually what demons do is, they will try to make the person fearful, or we use the word intimidate. So they'll try to intimidate us uh, by showing themselves very powerful. So you might find that, I told you, know, one of our outreach pastors, he told me that, uh, that a lady, she carried the whole cot with one leg of the cot. And she's standing in front of him. And he's like, what do I do now? You know, how can this happen? So 
what happens is the person who's gone to minister will feel i think i'm not strong enough to deal with this demon but that's what the demons want so don't ever lose your confidence your faith uh okay do whatever show whatever power you have don't be intimidated sometimes what they do is they um they may make claims that, uh, oh, I know there are so many people in your family. It happened to one of our uh, pastors. Uh, apparently, the demon said, I know you have you know, so many children. I know where you live. I know what to do. You know? So it's scary. Like, oh my goodness. Should I even cast this demon out? Look at the way the spirit is talking. But it's all fear tactics. We shouldn't give in to these things. Or they might try to bring uh, fear and shame Oh, now you're a pastor, but I know how you were and how I know you cheated people. Something it'll try to bring up. And then you're so scared. Oh, this demon is going to speak all the mistakes that I ever made in my life. But these are the tactics that demons generally use. So don't give, give in to it. And, you know, we can uh, just, as Jesus used authority, we'll see later. We we'll look at 10 steps. You can just command the demon. Okay, be silent. And then you continue ministering to the person because the demon is not who is important. The person is important. Okay, so some more, a few, uh, some more keys that we uh, can understand is when we are ministering to the person, sometimes there is this idea that I have to be loud. You know, I'm in warfare, so I have to be loud, I have to shout, I have to scream at the devil. But actually, you know, authority is not in the level of our sound. Okay? We can be very firm, but we can be very, you know, soft in our voice and say, no, devil, you have to leave. And, but when you're coming from that place of authority, the demons know. So it's not about, you know, shouting and screaming. And you, we can be shouting and screaming, but there can be no authority in what we are actually saying. That is also a possibility so be confident know that it's about faith it's about authority and the demons have to listen to us now what else we've already said be loving to the person now when the demons speak right they may have a, a way of um, we say taunting taunting is like you know like uh, provoking you uh, oh, so what are you going to do? Can you do this? Uh, I don't think you can do it. You're not that senior. Many things they may say to actually provoke us, right? So then what happens is we may also develop the tendency to fight back and be arrogant, you know, with the demon. What will you do? Like you get into a match uh, argument with, with the demon. I think it's unnecessary. Okay, in some places these things happen. That's why we are just sharing. Uh, so no need to challenge the evil spirits uh, or because all that is distraction. So usually we say, right, that demons, we, we find manifestations or people behave like they are possessed with a demon, isn't it? So why is all this happening? It is actually one of the distraction tactics of the devil. So when manifestation happens, what demons think is, we can scare them, they leave us alone. Don't be scared by anything, any kind of behavior. You know, they may speak in a loud voice. Or I remember there was one girl that I saw and it was very strange. She was, uh, she was just making all these dance poses that you, know, you see on uh, some um, religious worship places. She's just continuously dancing and she's making different poses and nobody was able to stop her from doing that. But looking at her was really scary. Like, what is going on? Why is this person behaving like this? But it's all distraction. Don't even worry about it, okay? Do whatever you want to do. Uh, we are interested in setting this person free. So what do we do about that? Okay, what should we say to the demon? Uh, or, you know, what should we say in those times? It's very important to proclaim the lordship of, of Jesus and talk about the finished work of the cross. The demon will talk many things. Don't get distracted. Keep saying, Jesus has won the victory on the cross. 
over Satan, over sin, over sickness, over death, you are defeated in the name of Jesus. So we are going on proclaiming the power of the cross, going on proclaiming the victory of Jesus. Okay, So we should not stop doing that. Keep speaking the victory of, of God. Then we can also proclaim the word of God. God will, Holy Spirit will remind us different scriptures. No weapon formed against uh, me shall prosper. You say that. Speak those words because in uh, Ephesians 6, we saw the word of God, sword of the spirit. So declare scriptures as it comes to your mind. Uh, we can also take time to sing songs, right? So what kind of songs can we sing? Declarations. You know, the, there is power, power, wonder working power in the in the um, what blood of the lamb yeah so that's a good song to sing uh, in the name of jesus is a good song to sing because the whole time when the enemy is trying to distract you you're bringing back the focus we already won the victory you don't have any place you have to leave so sing songs of victory okay that will be appropriate for that and um unless like sometimes people what they do is they try to repeat you know, they say, uh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, or uh, uh, there's power in the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood. I have seen people, you know, they try to do that. Um, maybe because they think that will create some power or something. But we don't have to engage in repetition to see the power of the name of Jesus or the blood of Jesus. So it may not be necessary. So vain repetition uh, is not required. Or sometimes people have this tendency to say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah the whole time, right? Uh, it's not wrong, but it may not be required. Okay, because, um, yeah, it, it's fine. You can just go ahead and focus on the ministry part of it. Then, what else is helpful? Now, if the person is... Remember we said that they can be fully demon-possessed and uh, completely, mm, uh, like even mentally, they, they're in a place where they cannot understand anything, like insanity or um, uh, sometimes they seem unconscious. These things happen. Everything is right with the body, but they, they are not functional. If they are in that state, then getting their cooperation is difficult. But... If they are anywhere, uh, you know, less than that, let's say partially, the person manifests and then they are understanding what you're saying. If they are in that state, one more good thing to do is to talk to the person. Okay? Make them sit down, talk to them, tell them, do you understand what is happening to you? They may say, no, I don't know what's happening to me. Then you can explain to them, see, it's like this. Uh, don't get afraid, don't be scared. But uh, it seems like you, um, some demon spirits are uh, uh, tormenting you. But uh, Jesus wants to set you free. You can ask them, do you want to be free? So the will of the person is very important. Okay? How do the demons work? They work by our will. That's why open door, all that is there. If we allow them, they come. So if you speak to the person, then you are able to, if that person decides, I don't want this then it's easy to get the spirit out. Okay, so wherever possible, try to talk to the person, help them, tell them uh, about how Jesus loves them because their willingness is very important. Now, you can be very anointed and you go and minister. Let's say the person doesn't want to be free. You can minister, the best preacher can minister, everyone can minister, demon will never leave. Okay. So the willingness of the person is important if possible speak to the person okay few more things um before we go into the steps yeah so after deliverance we say post ministry care is important um especially you know when it comes to casting out demons the reason is the way we saw the demon goes it collects more powerful demons and it comes back, tries to attack the same person. So when a person is free, when a person is delivered, as a pastor or a leader or you know a counselor, we have to help that person from then onwards. Don't leave them. 
help them learn the word help them be baptized in the holy spirit guide them very very important in deliverance if anybody has been delivered we have to take care of them after the deliverance okay reason is entry points are still there now if the person goes back has the same behavior the demon will come back no use you fasting praying casting out the demon so post ministry care is very important in deliverance then what else uh, can we keep in mind sometimes there are things which people carry which are the open door for the uh, demons so let's say i'm praying for somebody and i'm feeling like the demon is leaving but it's not leaving and i don't understand but later i notice maybe you know they have an amulet or they have a ring or they have something on their body a chain or something on their body uh, which becomes that source of that you know demon uh, taking charge of them so if the holy spirit leads you to notice any such thing you don't be forceful you ask them you tell them look i think this is a problem would you be willing to get rid of it so make that person remove it okay so they'll say okay fine i'm ready to remove it i'm ready to cut it i'm ready to break it throw it then you go ahead and minister otherwise when we are ministering we may find that uh, it's a frustrating exercise the demons are just not leaving because of that object which the person carries so that also happens in many situations okay uh, yeah okay five more minutes i'll oh lots of instructions we have let me do this let me just pause here okay and next class i'll go through some more general instructions and the 10 step process of how do we actually take a person through a deliverance but right now are there any questions any thoughts or you have observed some deliverance sessions yes women them sometimes they used to do vomit demons when we are praying they used to do vomit mm. so what is that means they come from eating something and mm. okay they vomit okay so uh, like in scripture we may so that's what i'm saying whatever we are sharing here is based on the verses in the bible and practical experience okay so based on practical experience many times when the spirit is cast out um it is i mean in the bible it shrieked the spirit screams falls to the ground like that you have uh, you know instances but in practicality when the demon leaves sometimes people vomit so you know that they are free actually so yeah so these spirits can come out in all these ways i've heard people uh, say that um tears right like once the spirit was cast out the person suddenly um like crying and tears were coming out okay but after that he was fine so yes these are all ways in which uh, the demons can actually come out I, i know it's strange but yeah it happens yes nina has a question so uh, pastor when you say uh, when they are in some people when they are not in their right mind uh, so you are telling like when we pray for them they will be uh, yes that spirit will go no you take authority if they are not in the right mind then everything depends on you your faith your commanding your ministry go by that right can an unbeliever can cast out demons with the name of jesus no francis 
Unbeliever cannot cast out in the name of Jesus. But he, the guy using name of Jesus, hmm? he's in different faith. I uh. hear a story like this. Uh, on, I'm not able to hear it too well. I hear, I hear a story like this. Uh. Uh, the story is like, there's a like real story. On meeting happened, their demon possessed. Hmm. Uh, a lot of people have tried to cast out. Hmm. Uh, but nothing happened. Mm. Then they went one rank man came. He here and he saw how to manifest, uh, how to cast out. Then he used the Jesus name, the demon went. Mm. So if he is not a believer, it's not possible. Even if it looked like that person at that time was set free. An unbeliever cannot cast out a demon. Reason is, like in scripture we say uh, that we who believe, we bear the name of Jesus. We bear the name of Jesus. So the name of Jesus, it's not like a license. We are authorized okay, completely. So when I say the name of Jesus, it's, it's a sign of the authority that I carry. Uh, and that I am in the kingdom of light. How can the kingdom of darkness fight against itself? When somebody is not born again, they are still in the kingdom of uh, darkness. They cannot fight against each other, demons. So it's not possible. An unbeliever cannot cast out a demon in the name of Jesus. Huh? Yeah, the sons of Skiva is a good example. But the uh, people from other faith, like uh, uh, many people, like who is priest in mosque and all, na, they used to cast out demons. So how it's possible? See, everything should be um, understood or received on the basis of the fruit. So if we are saying we have really cast out demon, we have to see the life of that person who's been set free. Just because you have like, you know, one nice um, people are screaming and somebody cast out and they seem free, it's not free. You understood? They're still in bondage because you see, even in the, uh, in certain so-called churches, they don't, where they don't believe in being born again, you have an entire entire ministry called as exorcism. Exorcism, exorcist, you would have heard about it. And they also claim that in the name of Jesus, they cast out and the people are uh, set free and all that. But when we look at the Bible verses, it's not possible only. If you're not born again, you just cannot cast out demons. You're still in the kingdom of darkness. How will you cast out demon? Actually, ma'am, even in uh, Luke, where there's an instance where they accused Jesus of uh, having the power of Belzebul and all that, because he was casting out the various spirits out of people. So he said that, how can uh, Satan fight against his own self? It's right. not possible. It's That's like a, true. It's like the people of the nation are fighting within themselves of course mm. the nation in fall. So Satan wouldn't want that in the first place. Yeah, yeah. So kingdom divided yeah, cannot kingdom divided. stand. Yeah. So yeah, that's not possible. All right. So um, if those are all the questions, there is one here. I'll have to address that. So Jackin says, Pastor, is it true that when we cast out the devil from one person in the name of Jesus, is there a possibility that the evil spirits can enter the person standing next to them if they have allowed any open doors yes <laughs> yeah there is a possibility uh Jackin. yeah but you know when we go with prayer and we go with you know uh, we cover uh, people in the blood of jesus and then we go ahead and minister i think it should be fine yeah is that okay yeah all right Fine. So let's pray then and we'll close off for today. Um, who's going to pray? Sorry. Heavenly Father, thank you. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for guiding us here for this uh, time of learning. Heavenly Father, 
thank you for leading us mighty any father and i pray Lord, about your authority any father exciting it any father and please help us to do so any father and uh, thank you uh, thank you very much for us learn all this to man any father and uh, Lead us mightily, any Father, when we try to cast out demons from others, any Father, when we try to express our thought, any Father, be with us, guide us, and lead us mightily when doing so, any Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. God bless. Bye for now.